Yes. Yeah. So please, at Victoria, I have I have asked the TAs to assist you to polish up. You know it already, but you should practice more how to identify the main connective. So Thank you, you, Madam. Just a minute, just a minute. You name the compound by the main connective. So if you don't know which one is the main, because the main connective means the master connective in that given expression. Who is the master? Uh -huh. So how do you know who is standing and who is connecting, bringing all the other parts together? Or which operational sign is the final authority after all? That's how you do it. And so far, example three on page 21, that we are working with. You will see that we have negation P, conjunction, then an open bracket. Now, everything in the bracket is one. We think of all of them as a collective one. So it, all that bracket component is the right conjunct. Suzanne, please, are you following? You are the one I'm addressing. But yes. Uh -huh. So everything in the right, right bracket there is just the right conjunct of our main connective. The conjunction in front of not be there. Okay, so we we'll have not be conjunction. Open bracket, not be conjunction, not Q. The main connection is conjunction. If it is a conjunction, then it means after all our plotting, the last operational sign that we will we'll use will be the conjunction. Okay, so now we know how to formulate our PP. What is the name of that? True, true, false, 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 true, false. I'm sure that one too, everyone knows it. If you don't know, you can always ask for help. You will know, but maybe it's not too clear to you still. You can ask for help on that tutorial. Okay. So we have true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now, the Q becomes true, false, true, false. I've said that already. So we need the negation of P. Susan, what does yes, well, do? Negation makes the original true. It turns upside down. Excellent. You say it better. So if we have P to be true, what will not P be? False. Uh -huh. So under that column where we have not P, the first line will be false. What should the next one be? False. Next false. one. True. True. Next one. True. true. You understand that. That's how we fill the yes. Now let's go to not kill. We know kill, so we can okay. not kill. Yeah. So let's first not kill to be what? False. So the next one. Okay. Sorry, DJ. True. Susanna. <laughs> Susanna, let's have one help you, Ben. Can I let that one? So we are. <laughs> Hello. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Benedicta. So not kill. First column for not. So the first one is false. Mm -hmm. Next. The second one is true. Already That's what I gave you as a clue. The, the next, next one is false. And the last and the one. one is true. Very good. So now if we have the two, Susan, I'm sure you'll be hearing me. Just listen, okay? Then now we can do the third column. We need the third column we have created there. I say third because P and Q there, we, we gave it. But then we are identifying the ingredients we need. We need not P and not Q to be able to have the correct values for our bracket. Let me see what is inside the bracket. Yes, so we are, we are working to create our values for the whole set, that bracket there. And we have all the ingredients we need to answer the values for what. Uh -huh. So we do not P conjunction, not Q. Now we'll be focusing on the columns for not P and the columns for not Q that we have done earlier. If you are doing it with me, then by now you would have filled all that in. Okay? What we did, to fill it in so it is easier. If you don't fill in not P, you won't be able to interpret not P and not Q. You need the values for that to be able to do the rest. So I'm also filling in mine so we can, we can continue together. All right, so now I want not P conjunction, not Q. The first one I gave it to you already, it is F, because we are dealing with the conjunction. Conjunction will only be true when all conjunction. So the first one is false. What should the next one be? Please use your Madam, okay. false. 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 Emmanuel, yeah. Okay, so the next one should be false. 
for there is at least one false there. Third one, true or false? False. False. And false. False. Yeah. False. Then the last one. True. true. Very, good. Very good. Do you realize that we are not done yet? This is just yeah. We just finished doing our right conjunct. Okay. Now we can write the whole formula down, which is not B conjunction into bracket mm -hmm. B conjunction, not Q. So we have the whole formula now. On your table, therefore, you are going to look at not P, and then you mm -hmm. will combine not P with what we had in the bracket that we have just done. Applying which compound mm -hmm. or collective, the conjunction. conjunction. Uh -huh. So what should I write at the last column of our question three? First, uh, excuse me, the first uh, uh, column. What should I write there? False. 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 Next, next one. False. 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 Third one. False. False. And the final one we all agree with. True. 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 And we can use this to do our analysis. Is this a consistent or inconsistent for that? Consistent. 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 Contingency. There is a type called a contingent formula. See, I'm allowing the chorus answers because sometimes it encourages you to be a bit more vocal. If it will not be disruptive, I don't restrict. I allow all of you to talk sometimes. It is deliberate. It's part of the teaching skill. So now, my dear Suzanne, we just finished filling in that one. If you got yeah. that, it means you understand conjunction, you understand hey. negation, you know the principle that we even do in math, board math. You work with the bracket first, get values for it, then you use it to apply for the other ones. Now, now, Susan. You owe me a lower. So now, Susan, just tell me for question four. Fill in the gaps for me there. We have done okay. this. Yes, question four. Still on page 21. Those who joined us late. We are on page 21. I'm doing question four. It's a, it, it's really Okay, complex. so wait. Which compound, which compound is it? It's still conjunction. It's still conjunction. Very good. Continue. So negation Q. The first two have been done already. So and the first false. Mm -hmm. The second one is true. Yep. And then the third one has already been done, so it's false. Yeah. And then the first one is true. Very good. Now we have that, so we can do our big compound. Because our big compound is a P conjoined to a not Q. We have the values for P, we have the values for not Q, so we can apply our conjunction. So what should I write now? For the first one. Susan, are you there? Susan, are you there? True. Who is disturbing Susan? Please let her be you. She's doing an element of formal logic. <laughs> who, who is audible? Who can be heard? Go ahead. Emmanuel, go ahead. We are on the... Um, but the first one is false. Good. Second one is already done. It's true. Is it correct? Check for me. Is my second one correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think there's a content uh, uh, the, the, one of the videos I uploaded the negated condition or something wasn't correct for, for the very first one that I brought from previous years. So when you get to that, that one, then you, you check it. Okay. Then you correct it. All right. Okay. Third you, column. It, Emmanuel, continue. Third column. False. Good. Then the last one. False. False. Uh, Tetra Bridget, we are on number four now. We just finished doing number four. Filling in the gap. Okay, very good, Emmanuel. Thank you, Emmanuel. Do yeah. So we, we, we just filled in three. Oh, set. Set three. Uh, page 21, everything. Then we, we just filled in question three and four because Suzanne wanted us to. As for just joined, it's not our issue. <laughs> eh? Yes, Joy, if you join late, it's not someone's fault. You see that. Sometimes they are funny. They say, ah, but I just came to school. They said they've done two as I just came. Ah, 
But how can that one be someone? So we should have all <laughs> we should have all waited for you to come before you start learning or doing anything. Anyway, so your friends will assist you over there. I thought you were addressing me. Okay. We have done question three and question four. I want us to now do a little bit one that is a bit more complex than five. But just before we do that, can you mute yourself if you think your place is noisy? We have done questions three and four, filled it in. It's not difficult, but it's worth practicing over and over again to polish up. So let's do question two now. Um, who, would, who would do that for me? Keep your hand up if you want to. We'll fill everything in so your friends will applaud you. Great, great. Which in a comfort? Go ahead. After that, we can get uh, Robert Ocoli and Okwampa. Excellent. I like the, the way the hands are shooting up. Very good. Let me take comfort, which in. <coughs> Let's do the first. Go ahead. Um, question two. Yes, please. Okay. Um, P. Um, is it this junction? Yes. Don't forget the junction. Go ahead. For the first column, it's T. Good. That's one. The second one, too, is a T. Good. Third one. It's a T. Last one. An F. Excellent. Well done. Plus one. I guess started with my plus one thing. Someone told me the last time, when you do the plus one, yeah, I don't come for the online sessions, but I'm doing plus one. I said, ah, but your 100 mark is still there for you to contend for. It didn't diminish. So whichever avenue you use, you still get your marks. But those who have also come in, applied labor to the raw material. They've added efforts. They have to be rewarded. So no one loses, no one gains. And so far as you are using your own channel, which I just got herself a mark. Emmanuel Idia got a mark. Then Susan. And then Bridget, I think. Someone helped uh, Susan. Benet. Was, was it Benet? Benedicta. Uh -huh. Thank yes. you. Great. Let's continue. So I'll get someone else to do the next column. Um, thank you very much. Ufoli, Robert, go ahead. OK. Doc. Yes. Um, the next column is E conjunction Q. Very good. So we know that. Conjunction will always be false unless they are both true. Mm -hmm. So the, it's only the first one which will be true. The exactly. second, the third, and then the fourth will be false. Hey, this man looks like a TA bow. Look at how he does the sandwich. <laughs> In charge of the course. Hey, everybody give Robert to fully farm. You know. <laughs> Said it. Can't it. Mm. Even if you didn't know the course, but at least after his summation of it, you will have a fair idea of what's going on. Well done, sir. Let's take Fred Davidson for the next one, Fred. Then I'll come to Kwampa. Fred, do the, the third one. Okay. So, Doc. Yes, sir. Uh, you are dealing with the conditional scale. Yes. So our first column is going to be true. Okay. Then our second will be four. Yes, sir. Then our third will be two. And the last one will be two as well. Okay. Is it a lottery something that made you do the truth, 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 and some places for us? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> All your answers are correct, but how? I didn't get uh, what you were saying. Uh -huh. I was asking my friend that. I think what he said. Eh? Yes, madam. Okay, so he said the first column, we are under P conditional Q now, question two of page 21. Madam, he said the last one is uh, true. true. That's why. Uh, so I'm, you see, uh, say, 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 David, you see what I said? Yeah. I wouldn't think that you were doing lottery something. So explain to you, yeah. Uh, so, when dealing with conditional descent, we know we know that all our when the when the antecedent is for oh a conditional will only be for when the antecedent is true and the consequence is true. So with the last one, my hello. Go ahead, you are doing excellent. Oh, no. Oh, okay. So. 
Right now, we have P being forced and Q being forced as well. So it's going to end up being two. So that was the last one my brother asked about. Very good. Well done. So just to add, I will. Really, so if I say, if you study, then you will pass. That's a conditional statement. If you study, yes. then you will pass. If you do not study and you do not pass, what I said is still true. You see, if you study, then you will pass. So if someone does not study and didn't fall, and so he does not pass, consequent fall, what I said is still true. So, so if you are worried that uh, if B, then Q, B didn't happen, Q also didn't happen. It still makes a conditional to, if you wash my car, then I'll give you 10 Ghana. So if antecedent, then consequent. Antecedent didn't happen. That's false antecedent. Uh, consequent also didn't happen. Then the conditional is still true. If it rains, then the ground will be wet. Antecedent didn't happen. That is, it didn't rain. Then the ground also didn't get wet. Then whoever said if it rains, the ground will be wet. It's, it's still correct. What he said is correct. So a false antecedent leading to a false consequent will still be true. But I think even uh, our friend's own captures it better. For you not to have to think through all the logic of it, understand that the only time the conditional will be false, the only time it will be false, is when the antecedent happens, but the consequent doesn't happen. The consequent oh, follows it whatever it goes. If the antecedent comes, but the consequent doesn't come with it, then we have a problem. So if the antecedent is true, but the consequent turns oh, false, oh, please. Okay. Mute your mic, eh? Mute it. If the antecedent happens but the consequent doesn't follow, then it will create a false conditional. If you study, then you pass. So you study and then you don't pass. That is when the conditional statement made becomes false. All other conditions still make the statement true. Okay. I will please is it better? Yes, madam. Uh, that is that bar because of the meaning of material implication when we start doing equivalence, so you don't get to come. Well done, said David. I put down your name already. Let me let me mention the names I put down so that if I left you out, but I wasn't writing earlier. Then you come to me. So I have a chain of comfort, Manuel Idia, Benedicta. Benedicta, I didn't get your surname, but I think I can trace it. Anka something. Ankama. Ankama. Yeah, I get it now. Ufoli Ukwampa, Fred Davis, Susanna. Susanna, I missed your first name. Hey, Susanna will be to me. She started the discussion. Susanna, when you come back on, that prompt me so that I add your same name. I can find you easily. Okay. All right. Who, if I have not put down your name, tell me. Someone says, Doc, me, please. Bridget, yes, I forgot your name. What did you do? You were interrupting, then I stopped you. Did you? <laughs> did you <answer? laughs> Please, please, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the last one, the biconditional. So you haven't answered yet, right? Uh -huh. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. That that, one is for you for <laughs> All right. So let's do the last one now, Bridget. Go ahead, please. Okay. P biconditional Q. And we know that with biconditional, it is true when anytime both alternatives have the true value. Is so the first one, the first one will be true. Yes. The second one will be false. Mm -hmm. The third one will be false, and the last one will be true. Hey, we are confident, Papa. Well done. You see, Thank so you. those who didn't get her well, even though she was very explicit, it doesn't need any addition. All she said was, if you have a, a compound whose main connective is a biconditional, like the one we have up there in our box for that column, she answered question two. Now, see that. When you have that sign, by condition, the equivalent sign between two alternatives, those two sides will only, I mean, the compound will only be true when the two alternative sides of the by condition have the same truth value. I want you to get used to the language of elements of formal logic so that you can write them easily when you are asked the question. Don't say that, that side, when that side, that if it's a conjunction, the conjunct, if it's a disjunction, the disjunct, a biconditional, the alternatives or the equivalence, et cetera, so that you can easily capture what you want to say unambiguously. Otherwise, you will say something that you didn't need. Okay, so for this one, when the 
alternatives share the same truth value. Truth value means either true or false. So when they are all true together or false together, then a biconditional will be true. So where they are false, false is true. Where they are true, true is true. The only time we'll have a biconditional being false is when there's an imbalance. When one is true, the other one is false. Or when one is false, the other one is true. That is when we say the biconditional is false. Very good, Bridget. I'll put down your name. Now I want it's to chip in. Yes, please. I want to chip in quickly that always remember you won't always have a compound whose let's say it is a disjunction, whose disjunct are atomic states. Sometimes the disjunctions, disjuncts are themselves compounds. Okay. So it will come pregnant. It has a big set to it as well. If you turn two pages back to page 17, do that, they'll come back to our page. Page 17, the last set of formulas there. The one that has been numbered eight. How many collectives do you see there? Michael, Michael Rabero, page 17, number eight. Okay, there are 10 hands. Michael, do you have an answer for me? If not, then let me take Rebecca Franny. Rebecca. Follow me, otherwise I'll skip you. Lindsay, if you, you're, yes, Lindsay is not helpful to me. I want you to use your food, okay? Rebecca Franny, I would ask, a Japon Rosina. A Japon Rosina, look at page 17. What are the two connectives there? Dog, is it a set? Set one. Hello, dog. I said the last set. The last set. The last set. set. The, yes. Number eight. The main connective. No, I didn't ask for main connective. I didn't ask for main connective. I said, what are the connectives there? Um, Conditional and then disjunction. Very good. I want you to follow, friends. Don't get distracted, eh? So there is a conditional and there's a disjunction there. Now, now I am going to ask what you were expecting me to ask earlier, Rosina. And I want mm -hmm. Priscilla Doma to answer that. Priscilla, tell me which of those two connected is the main one right there. No, please. It's conditional. Do you, do you know the one we are referring to, number eight, too? Question eight. Yes, on page the main 17. Connected. No, please, sir. See, page 17, eh? The last set of questions. Are you there? You see the last set yes. of questions? Yes. The, the first one for that last set is numbered question eight. Can you see it? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yes, you have to follow because you were referring to the middle one, I think. So go to that set. The, and look at the junction. Set is junction. Can you see that? Uh huh. Yes. So I'm saying that here is a disjunction. The right disjunct is an atomic formula R. But look at the left disjunct. The left disjunct is itself what? a conditional. So it isn't all the time that you have a disjunction that uh, has one side an atomic, the other side also an atomic. No. Sometimes you can have a disjunction, a conjunction, by a conditional, what have you, whose Conjunct or disjunct are themselves compounds. That means that the side of that connective comes already with other compounds. And so you should be able to read your formula as well. Okay, let's go back to our page 21 that we were dealing with and then continue. Uh, it was Rebecca who spoke last. Who just spoke? <laughs> I want to give you an example. Oh, Dog guy. Rosina. Rosina. Rosina, they see my mom marked that. After Rosina. The mom of Yes, 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 the mom. Thank you. All right. So now let's do our question one. I'll take um, Tay, Isaac, Isaac Tay. Keep your hands up, okay? When you answer the question, you put it down for opportunity for us. Isaac Tay, look at question one. How many atomic formulas do you have in question one? <laughs> Isaac J, how many atomic formulas do you have in question one? Okay, Isaac is not ready. Let me take you in this, Erica, here. Talk. Yeah. 
You need to be muted. How many atomic formulas do we have there? Yes, we are back to page 21. Ah, page 21. And 21 is numbered up there. If you look down, you see 15. That's why some of you go up there, 21. But, uh, question set one. Oh, very crying. Oh, anyway. Anyway, go ahead. You don't know how many formulas are there, or you, you don't know. <laughs> Edmond Goche. Then please one. Excellent. There's only one atomic state. Mm. I don't know how many people want to see. There's only P. P stands for one statement, a simple statement. It can be either true or false. So if I, I am asked to create a feeling that table over there, then I will kind. What should I write in the third column where there is yeah. double negation P? Again, again, four. Uh, Madam, please, you should write true. For the first column, right. Okay. Yes, please. And then the second one, what do I write? Um, please, false. Very good. Explain why. Um, Madam, assuming it's negative, that means you take the other side, which is false. Okay. But since it's positive, it means it has to be the same. You. So in other words, what Genevieve is saying is, if you look at the values for P, which we were given, first column there, P is either true or false. Oh, I'm not allowing you to unmute me. Oh. I have not muted anyone. Everybody is talking. I'm not muted anyone, my dear. So check it again, okay? I've not muted anyone. All right. So P is true, false, and then not P will be a negation of P. So it will be false, true. Then we go back to the third column. He says not, not P. That's what our dear Genevieve did for us. Not, not P. So a negation of the negation of P and double negation, again, again, pop. So the two negations will cross out and it will return back to a starting point, P. Then the next column, I think this one, Tracy can kill it for us quickly. Tracy, do the fourth column for us, not, not, not P. The first one is F. What should we write for the last one? Tracy. Julia Boache. Julia, go ahead. Madam. Um, Madam, we changed the note. What should we write in the, the last one? No, I don't know. Yeah, Natani, I'm on the Madam. top column. One, two, three, four. We have, we have filled in the F for the top. What should we write for the down one? Follow, please. Madam. Julia, do you know the answer? Or oh, Miss Pashi, go ahead. Baba, go ahead. Madam, please, it's Madam. true. Baba, go ahead. Madam, please, it's true. It's true, very good. You got yourself a mark. Now we will take um, the, the very last one. Someone was calling me. Please go ahead. Rebecca, are, are you now? Can you speak now? Yes, please. So tell me what we, we should write for them. The last column there, one, two, three, four, five. The first one is true. Very good. I like that. I like people who are very confident. They are following the thing, so they don't have time for eh, me, 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 me. Rebecca, Franny, right? <laughs> yes, please. I tell me, you know, yeah. I want to answer the question, so who will they are, the Lord? They are moving, they are moving Judas. at our age. Okay, so we just filled in uh, question set one, two, three, four. This is not a difficult question, but it it allows you to practice and practice and practice more. Edmond, have you spoken already? Yes, madam. Uh, what did you answer? <laughs> what was you that? Asked that? You asked me that how many connective were in question one, and I said one. Okay, then I've written that in Edmond Bucci. I guess it's okay. Thank you for the prompt. Sometimes this woman here, oh, she's a boy about to intentionally. Madam, what's about me? Generally, Generally did I put down your name already. Okay. 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 Okay.
I'm helping you to 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 really get a nugget because it yes, and then I got it. Not that otherwise, then when I can, I just for the max. That is true. Okay, so let's move. Seth, you said you said something. I'll check. Let me check your smoothness level. Answer question five. Let us. Which compound is question five? Still on page twenty one. That's it. Set Talk up. with this conjunction. Very good. Hey, this one there, you are shy with me. Man, well man, done. I said Isaac. It's correct, pa. Now I'll take a Tracy. Tracy, earlier on when I called you, you didn't answer. We have filled in the... Please call call me. I'm coming. I'll call you all of you. I see 18 Yes, please. We, we, we filled in the first column. We filled in the second column. We, I'm sure we cannot do not be now, so I'll not make that uh, a questionable uh, question to ask. Please give it simply on your page, page, so that we can, we can. I don't think we should do it. Now I want to mute everyone. Now I want to mute everyone. You're all muted, please. When, when you have to speak, then you're mute. Someone's background is very noisy. Okay, not Q2, I think you can all do it, so I will not let you answer for it. So now, and even P conditional Q, we have just revised that. When I really ask this very important question, it made David say that a conditional will only be uh, will only be false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So our antecedent for page five, uh, question five is what? P. The only time that our conditional will be false is what? Let, let someone answer that. If we are Oushia, my dear, we are on the P conditional Q column, question five. What should I write at the first instance? Madam, please, I'll ask her. Isaac. Tell Isaac, go ahead. Madam, it's true. True. Second one. Yeah. The second one is Allow false. Please, me. False. The third one is already true there. Then the last one. Is true. True. Very good. So we just applied what uh, I will really, I will really got David to clarify for us. Okay, that's what we just done. Well done, Ted. Your name is put down. I will yes, thank you. <laughs> I will really came to make people understand when he's asking for his mark. This woman is doing that last. Okay. No, madam, you were you were doing oh, something. Well. No, oh, no, no, don't worry. Now it's your turn. Let's do the next one. Then you get your mark. Yeah, the next what one. Me? Please let Auli talk before he beats me up. <laughs> not be conditional, not be Auli. It's, it's still a conditional. Okay, we have values for our not P already. So our not P becomes our antecedent. You see that? Then our not Q becomes our consequence. They are aligned. So you won't struggle much. The only time a conditional will be false is when the antecedent is true and the consequent false. Any other condition makes it true, I will leave. So the first one I will down for you, you wrote true. What should I write for the second one? Madam, I'm coming. I'm, I'm yes, very Madam, my hand is up. Be patient, Deborah. Why are you bullying the brother? Uh, the man, uh, you bully. <laughs> Let me show you what to do. I will leave. just take it. Uh, if you have a pen or something, take the column that we are working with now. We are working with the third column, not P, you see. With what? The next column after that. That's not Q. Those two are focus. And then we are applying condition. So wherever the antecedent is true, the first part is true. That's our not P is true, but our not Q becomes false. It's where you write false. Any other one will be true. So the first one I've done is true. What what should be the value for the second one? Madam, please. Madam, please. Oh, not, it, was it Awule who spoke? It was Ty Isaac who spoke. Madam, yes. it's true. Ah, but I want Awule to talk. You don't want the brother to get his mark. Madam, it's true. Brother Awule. The third one. Awule, please let him talk here. Thank you. Madam, it's false. Awule, are you sure someone is not standing there telling you? Come on, to, come on, to, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you. Then the last one is all of us. The last one. True. 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 
Madam, Madam, for the same question. No, please. There's now the, the next one. You see where we put the whole compound together. So we have B condition, Q to bracket one. All conjunction. Bracket to okay, not B condition, not Q. Good. Okay. The compound. Hey. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. So how we, how we do it is this. You have a conjunction. The left yeah. conjunct is itself what? All of us. Sometimes my questions are like that. They are not very complicated. They just want to know if you know how to express the logic language. Mm. So that compound you see there is a conjunction whose left conjunct is what? A conditional. And whose right Conjunct is also a conditional with an antecedent and consequent, both negative. You see how I said it? So let's go back. So now we want to find our left conjunct, which is a conditional. Which of our columns is that? It is, a, I think, one, two, three, four. It's a fourth column. No, the fifth column. The fifth column. column. Yeah, very good. We are following yes. that. So the fifth column is our left conjunct. Then the first column is our right column. We are ready to go. Betty Yebwa, fill it in for us. What should I write in the first space up there? Madam, you called me. Deborah, I'll call you again. I'm coming. I want you to do the very Madam, last okay. The Isaac, I will talk. Right, Madam, I'll be next. Doc, the first one is true. Is this Betty? Yes, the first one is true. Move. The second one we have all agreed is already false. Put that. Check for me if my answer was correct. I think so. Yeah. So now we can go to the third one. True or false? False. Very good. We are doing well. And the last one. It's true. True. Good. That was Betty Eboa. So that it's your turn now to finish up for us. Nice. Now you see that we would have the work is done at this time, but I put in some other. A statement there by conditional to yes, now ma introduce you to equivalence. So there is a by condition that I've used the bar to cross it. I've done some crisscross something there for you to see that's not part of the work. If we were asked to decompose, we would have finished with what we, we had to do so far. That is what um, Betty finished for us. But I am going to show you that five plus two is the same as or is equivalent to what seven. And so the compound we worked with was a conjunction of P and blah, 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 and P here. That conjunction is still equivalent to this by conditional you see next. So let's see if they actually are equivalent. My dear um, Deborah. Madam. Look at the, val uh, the values for P on the same question five. Then the values for Q and then apply the law of biconditional. Let's fill it in there for us to see. What should I write in the first okay. column? Madam, the first one is true. True. Next one, we all agree is false. Yeah, the third one should also be one. Oh. Madam, false. We have a term, Deborah. Deborah, can you see why it's false? <laughs> so if you can yes, see, it's not a problem. Let me show you. So we are looking at P. Madam, because the first one is false and the second one is true. But they don't share the same truth value. Yes. You see that. Uh -huh. We are dealing with a biconditional. Biconditional, they want them to share the same truth value before. Uh -huh. So they don't share it. So we say it's false. There's no happiness in the home. <laughs> Welcome back from wherever I went to. Valerie Hagen. We are still on page 21. We are finishing question five. We are on the biconditional at the end. Deborah, what should we write for the last column? Okay. Madam, please, it's true. True, because they share the same truth value of what false forms is true. Now, we can tell, dear friends, look closely at the last two columns of your question five. The actual question we were giving, and then the one that Deborah just did. Deborah, I've written that in you, so don't worry. I, I'm sure I say it. I mean, okay. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote it down. Now let's let's look at uh, Betty Boy's answers. 
when we did the main conjunction and Deborah's answers when we did the by conditional. They are next to each other, still on page five, uh, page 21, question five. You will see that for the first row, look at, they are all true, true. The second one, they are both false, false, if you can see. The third one, they are both false, false. The last one, they are both true, true. What that tells you is that these two statements, even though one is a conjunction and one is a biconditional, they are logically equivalent. They are logically equivalent simply means wherever this one is true, this one will also necessarily be true. They share the same truth value under all possible truth conditions. That's logical equivalent. You say two formulas are logically equivalent when they have the same truth values under all possible truth conditions. And that is what I have quoted for you when you turn to page 22, the very next page. Turn with me, please. Then JB, Damche Manuela. Manuela, read lesson four, understanding logical equivalence. Understanding logical equivalences. The identity we noticed in the previous lesson, example five and one, between P conditional Q into bracket, conjunction, bracket open, negation, P con conditional negation Q, bracket yeah, you. you see how you have done well. <laughs> <laughs> Someone hasn't done logic. What you say, ah, I didn't assist the crowd, I can't be very say. But you see that we can understand ourselves. P conditional, Q all into bracket, conjunction, open bracket, not P conditional, not Q, bracket close. No, continue. <laughs> and, <laughs> and P by conditional Q as well as P with not, not P and not P with not, not, not P is important. It introduces the concept of logical equivalence. Very good. So already, dear friends, at this stage that we haven't gone too far in our studies, you should be smart enough, and I think you all are, to detect at least two types of logical equivalences that your page two tells you. You'll see that turn again to page two of your workbook. You realize that about this time, if you don't have the way, how how you have disturbed yourself. Okay, go to page two of your workbook. You see that the first half of that page is discussing or is giving you the rules of equivalence. Logical rules of equivalence. Equivalence means oh, my line is breaking. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? No, doctor. Yes. No, doctor. Yes. Please yes. 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 all the participants. Please, is it better? Yes. Doctor, please, no. You can't hear me. Doctor, please mute all the participants. No, no, I'm not talking about participants. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh -huh. Yes, we can. Okay. It is a discussion. I don't want a monologue. I wouldn't have done a live session online. If I want a monologue, we'll come to class. I'll come and stand there and talk plenty. Then when I finish, I'll go. If we don't work the way we are working, it, people won't understand. So when it gets too loud and all over the place, I'm muted. But I didn't come to only pour in, pour, 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 pour. Then I think, no, it's not a good way to learn. Okay, so we'll manage. So my dear friends, just so that we don't also disturb others, we want to get it a bit measured so that we can, we can reconcile all the aspects. I was saying that, please go to page two. You would see the first half up there gives you rules that we call rules of logical equivalence. And I'm saying the word equivalence means equal value, equal mm, value. Uh, uh, there is no change in value, the value is the same. So if I gave you one 200 Ghana City note and you gave me in return, for 50 Ghana CD notes. We are, we are, you haven't cheated, we are having cheated you. The value is the same. The denominations may, may be different. The quantity may be different, 
but the value is the same. So equi value, equal value, equivalent. It's just saying that if I gave you five and I gave your, your colleague three plus two, you don't say a dog. I did that his own now, you gave two different things. Three, then you added two. Mm, me, they gave me only one, five. Five and three plus two are equivalent, <laughs> mathematically speaking. If you get that, then the rules that you see on page two up there, we'll go back to the page that I took you to 21 and then return back to 20. So you see the connection. Those rules are playing out up there. Mention any one of the rules you see there. Anybody who is looking at the rules of equivalence, they are the top rules, not the down rules. The down rules are rules of inference, rules that guide your deductions. If all men are thieves, then you are saying that your father is also a thief. Don't say, oh, but I didn't say my father is, I said all men are, but if you say all men are, I can deduce, I can take from it. I can infer then that your father is a thief. So if you don't want your father to be a thief, then don't say all men are thief. I told the main campus student, sometimes you say some, uh, some politicians are corrupt. Maybe the journalist said that. Then uh, a politician wants to uh, accost the journalist and say, why are you talking that way about us? See, but the, the journalist said, some, some politicians are corrupt. Some, why do you want to belong to the some? When I say some are, it also means some are not. <laughs> uh -huh. So the rules that you apply to infer to draw a conclusion, to deduce. They are the ones down there. They are called rules of inference, rules that help you to take from the given. So I say something, it guides you to validly deduce something else from what I say. They are different from the rules of equivalence, the rules of equivalence or the, uh, the ones up there. They are telling you that what you said is the same, logically speaking, as this other one. Okay. Now, if you get it, then you know that De Morgan's law, commutation, I'm sure that commutation you know, they are all rules of equivalence. Three plus two is the same as two plus three. We just change the position and we are true. We can say that they are commutative. Let me ask you, do you think three minus one is the same as one minus three? No. No. Uh -huh. So it means in mathematics, subtraction is not commutative. They can't change their position. As soon as you do that, the meanings will change. So three minus one cannot be equal to one minus three. But, but three plus no, one. No, subtraction and division. Yes, I would add more. Right? Some people are mass phobia. So if you add uh, division to the subtraction, they will, they will tune off. They will be sitting down, I can't hear anything. So you just bring small one, like a pinch of salt into the, <laughs> into the discussion, then you continue, okay? But you are so right, division two is, is not committed. So I was, I, I was applying the same rule to help you see that if I say two plus one, that can mean one plus two, and the meaning will change. So addition, is commutative. Multiplication is commutative. Three times two is the same as two times three. But division and subtraction are not commutative. If you understood that, then bring it to logic. Listen, P conjunction Q is the same as Q conjunction P. Logically speaking, okay, my dear friends, the meaning doesn't change. If I say P conjunction Q, plot it, is the same as Q also what conjunction P. Disjunction is also commutative. That is what has been expressed over there. So you see the Morgan's law, you see commutation, you see association. Association, the connective remains the same. Look at it very well. It's the bracket that changes. So you have P disjunction, the open bracket Q or R, bracket closed. It turns to become the same P, Q, R, the same co connective disjunction, disjunction. I want you to watch closely to help you. 
So look at your book whilst I explain. Okay. For association, P Q R, the same connective throughout. When it comes to the right side, it's equivalent to the, the same thing, but the, what changes is what? The bracket. The bracket changes from around Q or R to around what? P or Q. That's the rule of association. It means that wherever I see what is at the left side of the equivalent, it will mean the same as the one at the right side. Logically, the two sides will have the same truth value under all possible truth conditions. I've mentioned the Morgan's law, I've mentioned commutation. I just took you to association. Someone else give me any three apart from the ones I've mentioned for a map. Doctor. Melinda, please keep quiet, please. Melinda. <laughs> Melinda yes, I'm coming on. Is there a question? Um, another form of principle. Please do. Let me let me take Melinda. Melinda. Oh, Melinda, I want to give you a map. What are you? Okay, friends, go ahead. Um, please distribution. Very good. Add two more. Uh, look at it. Uh, look at the book and look, you look at it and tell me. I don't have a problem if you look at it. I, I, this is an assessment for you to learn. Yeah, no. It's not an assessment of whether you have learned. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to examine you to show that you don't know. I'm trying to assess you to help you rather engage it. So look at it and tell me. I'm oh. Okay. But, but uh, and also I wanted to add. Oh, uh, my brother. Maybe... Mommy answer you here. Yeah. Hey, Briar. <laughs> Give me the answer first. <laughs> Address. Uh, okay. I want to give you a map. Come back. <laughs> when you finish, then also I want to know who can follow. Okay, I right want my answer. I have given you the Morgan commutation and association. Then you have given us distribution. I want you to top up two more two, uh, uh, rules of equivalent. Look at it. Oh, you don't have your workbook with you. Eh? And I'm our answer. I'm waiting, oh, Prince. I'm very patient. Welcome in the reading room, dancer. I know you are in the reading room. Do you have your workbook? Look at pieces. Look at page two. Okay, doctor. Uh -huh. Have you seen page two? Yeah. Up there, look at the top. We have, you and I together have answered up to question, uh, the option four. So yeah. add two more from the rest down there. After distribution, what is next? Friends, after distribution, what is next? Transposition. Friends. Friends. Madam. Friends. Doc. Do you have your workbook with you there? Dr. Prince, yes. After transposition, what is next? Double negation. Let him answer. Yeah, right. Oh, hi, you know, dog. Uh -huh. oh, hi, After double negation, friends, what is next? I'm double negation. After double negation, what is next? I was wrong. Material implication. Are you are you a friends of me? Please don't lie. No, eh? <laughs> you don't have the book with you there. But I'm book in the Okay, let's continue. Friends, yeah, I I but he's saying he has it. And I can see his face too. So if you come to my <laughs> office and I'm, I'm going to the washroom, I'll lock my door. I can't trust you. <laughs> I'm pulling your neck. Let's continue. So the, the other three that uh, we have been able to pull out of friends are distribution, transposition, double negation. If you add the three, those three to the Morgan's law, commutation and association, you will know that at least you know the names of six rules of equivalent. Six, the Morgan's law, double negation, commutation, association, distribution. Let's finish up, three more. I think three more, there we can go. Anyone look at it and tell me, okay? Doc, me. Transportation. Transportation. 
Pathology. Material implication. Material equivalence. Very good. So the material people, they are two. Material implication. Yes. Okay. There's no material implication and material equivalence. Uh -huh. So now I want someone to tell me all of their head. And I want someone who hasn't spoken so I can reward her. Belinda. Belinda, I'm not giving you a mark yet. Belinda. Madam, since I've not spoken no. Just a minute. Let me take Belinda who talk first. Be silent for her, okay? Belinda, go ahead. Hey. Belinda, go ahead. If Belinda Uta is not ready, please, those who are spoken, can you kindly put your hand down? So I can call her there. I'm not spoken. Doctor, doctor, please, some people are still calling you, madam. Uh, when they do that, remind me to subtract marks from there. Please, who? Okay, doc. Uh, okay, hey. okay, doc. He's coming to use that to bribe me, you see. Doc, please, I have a question. Who has a question? My name is Isaac. But they, say, they just said you shouldn't say madam. One, it's two. Doc, doc, hey, doc, doc. doc. I'm a... First crime, first crime. Oh, please, doc, please. <laughs> Go ahead. It's a cultural thing. People struggle to call women who have attained places of scholarship by their office title. They just want to do mommy, auntie, sweetie. When they have also earned it. Why? It's so offensive. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can I please the question seven? This is your madam, no? Raya. Dr. Nancy, Dr. Nancy, <laughs> Dr. Nancy. I use the dog, they use the question. So, so Dr. Miles. Dr. Miles. Dr. Miles. Question seven. Question seven. On which page? Uh, page two. So two. They are not questioning. Uh, they are the rules. Yes, yeah, they are rules that you should seven. know. Yes, what does it mean? I don't understand the reason why P equals Q. It is the same as <laughs> what P is just in Q. You don't need to understand it. That is what it is. What? I don't need to understand why 2 plus 3 is the same as 5. But now the rest I understand, though. Listen, you know, I said I don't need to understand why 2 plus 3, uh, 2 plus 3 plus 5, 5, 1, is the same as 10 divided by 2. Yeah, 10 divided by 2. Yeah. It's a meaning. It's the meaning of the operations you are, you are using, mathematically or logically. That's what they mean. So if I tell you, um, if it doesn't rain, then I'll come to your house. Another way of saying that is, if it were, uh, I will not come to your house unless it's a junction. So P conditional Q, it's equivalent to not P is just Q. That's material implication. Okay. Okay. I wanted you, some Q. You are welcome. We'll practice more with them. But I needed okay. you to see it now and know that these are called rules of what? Equivalence. You need them to do that. Keep okay. Equivalence. Tautology, I think, is straightforward. Exportation is almost like an expansion, but it changes the sign, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Look at how they are and then them. Now I'm back to my sister. So my sister, you are reading on logical equivalences page 21. I referred to um, then you show that uh, this one is mute your thing, eh? Mute your mute your microphone. Mute it. Okay, where you are is very nice. I don't know if it's your gadget or something. Uh -huh. Thank you. I continue with your reading. So she she just showed us that P conditional Q. We are now page twenty two, lesson four up there. Mm -hmm. We are looking at understanding logical equivalence. Your line is not good at all. Your network. Is so network. I don't know if it's your bandwidth or something. I don't, I don't I'm typing. She's using two G. No problem. That's what she has. She won't steal. Who prints? Over here, you buy one grab workbook, but we can't try. Okay. My lady, if you could type it into the chat, then we will read it for you. I'm trying to engage both at the same time. Okay. Since we are recording, so the others can benefit. 
when when they join later. All right. So I'm saying that I want to ask a certain pertinent question. So follow me, surely. Carrie, you are next. Are you an Adelaide Crossland? I'll call you shortly. Having spoken, Rosalind. Oh, there's another yeah, Rosalind. Sure. Yes, hold on, please. There's another Rosalind I see who hasn't spoken. So I'll call you, Rosalind Brigay. I think I'll call you shortly. I was saying that look, lesson four, page twenty-two, up there. The C conditional Q but into back or into bracket conjunction, not B conditional, not Q. What we have seen already, and we have been told that that is equivalent to P by conditional Q. Which rule makes the first statement equivalent to the second statement? I want to reward that with a two mark. Telado. Which equivalent rule is that? Stellado. Okay, Stella is not speaking. Let's take Adelaide, Crossland. Adelaide. Um, the, the question again. We are on page 22, lesson four. Okay, up there, understanding logical equivalent. The, our lady read and said the identity we noticed in the previous lesson between, see that long statement there, and the second one, P by conditional Q. So it means that we identified a, a, a logical equivalent between the two. Which rule, which of the rules that we went to look at on page, on page two is expressed by this equivalent? Okay, let me think through it a little bit more. Let me get uh, Lige. I hope I pronounce your name well. Rosalind. Yes. Okay, go ahead. Which rule um, apply there? Can you see it? Yes. Which rule is that? Is it material. a third uh -huh. It's what? Material, material equivalent. Excellent. Equivalent. You end yourself too. It's material equivalent. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you, you will get two marks. Um, yeah. There's another rule to be careful. Otherwise, <laughs> if I go and tie it for her, the other. Madam, write my name well. I've written it well, Papa. I've, I've written it again. Okay. <laughs> so that I don't, I don't my dear friends, look at it very well. This is not tautology. This is not exportation. This is not a commutation. It is, a, it is material equivalent. It's not material implication. Whatever my colleague, my friend asked any. Okay. Let's look at the second one. Still on page 22 the narration that our lady was reading when I interrupted her. So as well as, I'll continue, as well as P is equivalent with what? Not, not P, and not P with not, not, not P. That is also an expression of a certain kind of equivalence. Which one is that? Um, let's see the hands, more hands. Promise, promise you should use your full names. I can call you. Okay, I, I won't be able to record that mark. I don't know which promise it was. Courage, Sago, courage. Which rule is that? Okay, let me take Emmanuel Ngaya. Uh, Madam, it's the Morgan's law. Oh, are you sure? The second one that I just read. It's not the Morgan. Madam, it's association. Hey, Emmanuel Ngaya, look at it closely. I'm, I'm referring to page 22. What we just read right now, after the first one that uh, uh, Rosalind said, Rosalind Ligue said it's uh, material equivalent. We continue to the next one. And I read it. When you have P being equivalent to not, not P, and not P being equivalent with not, not, not P, which, which equivalent rule are you expressing? Michael Rabel. Uh, dog. No, dog. Madam. Please, please. Double negation. Let me listen to Michael. Michael Rabel, go ahead. Double negation. Very good. That's double negation. Is it correct? Yes. 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 That's how you learn the rules. You learn them when you are using them. Okay. Please do that. Otherwise, hmm. you will well, but ah. yeah, you struggle. You should be able to do some of the questions. When you see the nature of the person, you will know that this will be valid because it's already stating a rule. Uh -huh. that's, that's what I want you to practice more. If I wanted it to be a tautology, 
and I gave you P, what, what a formula will make, will you join to P to create a tautology? P by conditional what? Very wuku. I'll call you a monu. Gevas. Is it Gevasi? Uh, Gevasi. I'll call you shortly, okay? Let me get where I will connect first. No, I okay. didn't get the I was saying that if I gave you just P as a variable, and I say create, create a, an equivalence that you, you identify as a tautology, mm. what will you add to the P by, when I write P by conditional, what will you fill it in with to create a tautology? By condition. David. No, conjunction. No. P. <laughs> Let me oh, ask. Hey, dog, please, I'm here. Be, be patient. Be patient. Hey, they like interacting power. I'll subtract max from you. <laughs> sorry, sorry, dog. No, 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 not to worry. Dog. I know you're okay. When you, when you get the answer like that, it's nice. Florence and Kruma. Florence. Right. Mm. It's, it's Johnson. Thank you. You are not getting my question. What will I put? I have P already standing, P by conditional. Which other statement will I add to this to create the equivalence rule called tautology? Ma'am, please, me. Please speak. Is it Julia Boache? Yes. Julia, what will you write? Madam, you write P dash junction P. Very you, good. That's one option. So that's yes. if, I, if I added P dash junction P, to the formula I've given. I have P by conditional, and you come and add P disjunction P. We have just stated what? Uh, tautology. So go to the rule. Those who are struggling to see, go to page two again and look at the uh, equivalence rule called tautology. That's the number 10 there. And then look at how you express a tautology. When you have P, it is equivalent to P or P. And that is also equivalent to P and P. So if I say P and P, and Emmanuel Edia says P, and Te Isaac says P or P, we are all saying the same thing, logically speaking. Whenever what I said is true, yours will also be true, his will also be true, the three of us will have the same truth values under all possible truth conditions. So P can represent P and P and it can represent P or P. The logical equivalence rule I'm applying here is what? Tautology. I hope you are getting it slowly but surely. Okay. Now let's continue with what we're doing here. My sister, if you haven't forgotten, I've forgotten who was reading, but please read for me. Two propositions are unless we, we have a new reader. <laughs> You can get someone else to read. Come in. And I'm going to read. Who is this? So I, I read. Come in. Come in. I read that so I read. Please, please, uh, if you, you all talk at once, I, I, it's difficult to identify who was talking. <laughs> I want the name is Courage Tagbo. Okay, Courage, go ahead. Thank you. Two propositions are logically equivalent if they essentially assess the same thing in, in different ways. Underline essentially in your text, your workbook, underline the essence. Essentially, okay. essentially, remember essence. So if we, if we were to open it out by a square root of 25, is the same as three minus eight, three plus, right? Huh. Square root two, and then plus. Right. What do they have in common? But you'll be amazed that square root of 25 is the same as three plus five. How are they the same? Essentially, they are essence. Essentially, they are essence. So I continue. Put differently, two statements, two statements are logically equivalent. If they, if they are truth values, if they are truth tables are identical. Yeah, so we are saying it differently. This put differently there just means if we want to say the same thing in a different way, we will say that two statements are logically equivalent. Hey, whose, whose thing is that? Oh, is it yours? It's, it's okay. called courage. Hey, please mute it, eh? 
Courage. Thank you. Bro. Earphone struggle a little when there's too much. Uh -huh. Thank you. So Courage. if you bro, don't bro. want to say it the same way as we said it earlier, you can just say two statements are logically equivalent. There are two tables are identical. We can still say it even better still. So let's get um, Melissa read for me, please. Continue from where courage left off. Is that the two different? Madam Amri, go ahead. It means that the two propositions have the same truth values under all possible truth conditions. I hope See, we all understand. Hold on. Hold on. Hold, on. Hold, hold on, please. I hope we all understand all. So the two propositions yes. have the same truth values under all possible truth conditions. Then <laughs> go back to page 21, where we did our, our uh, fill in the table. And look at uh, option five. Option five, then now we can compare the last two columns. The column that uh, uh, <clears throat> Betty read, and then the one that Deborah read. You see that in the first row, they both are true. The second yeah. row, they both are false. The third row, they both are false. And then the last row, they both are true. Those are all the possible true conditions we can have. We are working with two variables. You can only have four possible combinations. Remember what I told you in class. If there were three atomic formulas, then we would have had how many possible combinations of truth values? If there were three. I hear two units, Erica. Eight. Eight, eight, eight. Eight. Units. Units, Erica, I hear two. If there were three, how many possible combinations of truth values would we have? Is your hand has been up. Are you there? Or oh, you have just come to log in and you are not part of the class? Was it the third time I've called you, my dear sister? You don't respond. I'll subtract Martin. Okay, or anyway, break crying roots. How many possible combinations of truth values would we have had if we were dealing with three variables and not two? Doc, eight. How do you explain that? Are you sure you know it? I want to Doc, yes, two I'm... raised to the power three, it's eight. So. Excellent. Well done. You know it. That's what I wanted to hear. Doc. Well done. Don't cry. Doc. Mm. Yes, please. Doc, please, like I wanted her to explain it again. So we will continue now. Now you see that. What our friend just read, two different propositions have the same truth values under all possible truth conditions. If there are two variables, then all the four possible combinations should, those two uh, alternatives should share the same value throughout. If there are eight throughout, there are four throughout. That, that is the point being made over there. Please continue reading for me. Simply put, I said the same thing differently. Knowing logical equivalences will help simplify a complex formula by replacing it with its equivalent formula, which may be simpler, and yet will not change its meaning. It also helps to detect consistency, tautologies, contingencies, contradictions, or invalidity, etc. By plotting on a tree, we will be the we will be studying the three method of logical analysis and these concepts in subsequent lessons. Well done. You did good at that, Melissa. And you're so Thank you. Florence, do you have a question? You. you are welcome. Uh, uh, Florence, do you have a question? Oh, you're okay. I saw you come on the screen. Yo, so now we will test some examples of logical equivalences there. And the best way to do that is to plot on the table if you are not able to see it immediately. It, it's a matter of time. When we work it for some time, sometimes just at a glance, you can tell that this statement is equivalent to that. Just like at our level, we can tell that five plus three is equal to eight. So wherever I see five plus three, I can put in eight. 
the class one child doesn't know that. They will count sticks and contents as fingers and toes to know that. Apparently, five a as my image trigger two. You see, so we will grow to get to know that. But the test, how to do it, where where the class one child will count his or her fingers, we also, at our own pace, now that we are becoming better at it, we will plot on tables or on trees to establish whether two statements are logically equivalent or not. But we have to go one at a time, one at a time and understand then the rest will be practice. Other than push, putting everything together, if you go and put in the, the uh, whatever, the warm water before you put in the, you know, sometimes when you cook in a certain way, you swallow the whole rack. You have to do it in a systematic way so that you don't bend the bamboo before you start looking for it or something like that. So we are on page 22. Let's finish with this one. I have to rest a little before the next. I have another class at you. It's already almost time for you. So let's see. Look at um, exercise drill down there on page 22. Not into bracket P conjunction Q. Which type of formula is that one? Julius Ousu. Dog. Dog. Answer the question, say, or oh, let me pass it on. <laughs> the Morgan's law. I've not asked about law. I said, which type of compound? Hey, Hello. Don't do that. I said, which, which type of compound is that? Which compound is that? Which type of compound? Is it a compound? Negated. A negated it's compound. a negation. So it's a negation. If you want to say it explicitly, you say it's a negated okay, word. A, 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 a negated negation. Word. Uh -huh. So it's a negation. You can say it better by saying it's a negated word. Conjunction. You see that? Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Now, if you plot it, I get you now. You are, you are a little advanced, which is fine. So you will see that the first part, that is the not into bracket P conjunction Q, which is a negated conjunction, is logically equivalent to not P disjunction, not Q. And the rule that is applied there, I think that's where you got. So we are even ahead of us, and that's fine. I'll, I'll reward you with a mark, an, an, an extra mark. You know, so we should. Okay. So the Thank you, dog. yes, you are welcome. I, I just put it down. The rule that will move you from negation open bracket P conjunction Q to negation P disjunction negation Q is the De Morgan law. Well done. How about the second one? You just now put your hand down so that others can benefit. Harry, thank you. I, I wrote your name down for a mark for reading for me. Can put your hand down, Madam. Please have no school. Your hands down so that I can get my friend. Give us, give us. Did I pronounce your name well? Yeah, Madam is Gervais. Gervais, okay. Now I can. I thought you said Gervais. You, Gervais. Go ahead. The second one, yeah. which rule is that? Madam, it's associative rule. Well done. Well done. Hey, you people have done well. At a glance, now my aggressive exam. They have done well. Let me write it down. Gave it. A third one, Prince, Prince of Ori, third one, which rule is that? Okay. Which rule will make those three formulas there? Hey, that's a three, yes. I'm referring okay. to question five now. Prince, Prince of Ori, look at question five. Which rule, which equivalence rule makes the three of them the identical, logically equivalent? No, please, you caught me, you know, I remind you. My love, please, me. Dog, please. please. I'm trying to help you here. Hello, me. Hey, dog. Tracy Boache. Dog, I don't see you. Hello, me. Tracy Boache. Tracy Boache. Um, tautology. Very good. But we just did it to class. Um, is it not true? We just did it together. Anna. So I don't know why Prince. Prince, Prince is your girlfriend with you there? Dog, dog, please. <laughs> My honest, I go for yeah, my. Yeah, I had to stop taking your ears. Yeah, listening to your next one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was uh, Tracy. Uh, Tracy, hey, what's your name? Yes, please. Tracy, I broke one. I saw <laughs> when I saw Tracy, I broke one. At the same time, I saw a there's another name with uh, Julia Boachi. So I I put the two together. Tracy, I broke one. Okay. 
Thank you. Revision, quick one before we continue. Someone told us that the first one, example one on page 22 down there, the exercise drill, is a Demorgan law. By Demorgan's law, you can move from not to back a pick on the action kill to not be the junction, not kill. If you are, if you practice this well and well, you are already done with the elemental of You are even into deductive logic. That's what you are doing. You can deduce. So if I gave you the first part, you can re restate it using the its equivalent, so you can you can interpret a certain statement made by the investigator or something. Then you can diagnose who killed somebody or something based on the way the person speaks. They are all rules. So this is a good sign. If just at the introduction of it like this, students can at a glance see that this one is equivalent to this by so and so the Morgan. That's excellent. The second person for this association. See, it's conjunction, conjunction throughout. That's for example two there. Conjunction, conjunction, see that the, the sign didn't change. It is the brackets that change, and there are three variables there. So very good as association. Then our treaty about quality just showed us that. Example five is a tautology. I want to do example seven now. Madam, please, there is a Prince, I beg you, do that one for me. Where is Prince of Florida? Madam, please, there is a I will do it. Where is Prince? Prince of Florida? Promise, I'm sure. Madam, please, please. Doc. Promise, Promise. Doc, that one is, yeah, Doc. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Seven. Please, it's material implication. Very good. Oh, my idea. Let me write your name. You see that I didn't call you earlier because only promise. I would even think the promise is a lady. Thank you very much. Promise Ahoto. Is it Ahoto or Ahoto? Yeah, Ahoto. Doc. Yes, Ahoto. You. No, you must to everyone. Promise just told us that P conditional Q is equivalent to not P or Q. I will not come to your house unless it rains. See, I will not come to your house unless it rains. Not be the junction Q. It's the same as saying, if I come to your house, then it didn't rain, something like that. So you can rewrite a disjunction into what? Conditional. Let's go to example three. It is the right side, the first one. That this is not good. Then you can find the information that you give about the information that you have spoken about. If it's your hand up, I'll see you. Just keep your hand up. I'm telling those who have spoken to put their hand up. Fred, you have spoken to Fred David. Julia, so I can say, we are watching. Ma'am, no, my hand has been up, sir. Hey, I thought you have spoken, else I'm not calling you. Did you no, but that was the question that I just answered a random oh, question. No, but I put down your name. That's why. Okay. So ah, you know, okay. Uh, that's why. That's why I called the other sister Tracy Boache. So I was seeing your your Boache and her Tracy. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Julia. No, oh, please have the book now. Madam, question three, right? Oh. Yes, question three up there. Uh, Madam, question three is um trans transposition. Is it transposition? I don't think so. Hey, do like yes. dog. dog, let me answer. Please be patient. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> right now, I know that you came. No, you are coming to overtake someone. Dog, please. I have, I have silence, everyone. Let me take uh, Kayla Nana Atu. Kayla. Kayla, question three is which one? On mute first, I've muted everyone. Um, hey, I'll mute first. Uh -huh. Number three is which law? A negation of P um, and Q together, turning into not P conjunction, not Q. What, what rule will you apply? Doc, please, me, my hand has been up. Position. No, it's not transposition. Okay. But I wrote down your name anyway. Just I'm not giving a market. Let me take um this month. Go take this month. Yeah, I know. Go take more. Go 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 more.
So you see that the Morgan can move from. Uh, Madam, please jot my name. Yes, yes, I put it down. Yes, my Kote. Mm. One of my prayer warriors is called Kote. He's a powerful guy, but that. Uh, Okay. 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 Not in the bracket P conjunction Q. Eh? Became not P disjunction, not Q. Now, when you have not in the bracket P disjunction Q, it can become not P conjunction, not Q. So I'm showing you that the Morgan law works two ways. And you can check it from page two up there. You see two, two different ways of expressing it. Moving from a negated conjunction to become a disjunction with both of its disjunctions negated. Or moving from a negated disjunction to become a, a, a conjunction with both of its conjunctions negated. Let's see question four. Question four is what? Um, Stella, Stella do. Dog is association. Very good, Stella. Well done. Thank you. Let's look at uh, six. If you are a wish you had Six years. It's commutation. Very good. Hey. 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 Please, uh, the book is with me now. What is eight? You see what Adam did in the garden. Adam, where are you? He said, I am naked. And they say, where are you? What is your answer? I yeah, am naked. <laughs> I don't want to say this. The right? book is with me now. <laughs> and the book is with me now. Page I number two. Eight. Go to page 22. I have patience for you, everybody. Go to page 22. Okay, doctor. Down there, look at number eight. Tell me which rule, yes, which rule? Doc, this is equivalent. Doc, should I continue? Communicative, sorry, Doc. <laughs> whoever it's is, communicative. Whoever, whoever is there telling you this is not helping you grab. Oh, doc, it's whoever, communicative. Tell the person that, quick, 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 now, please keep quiet, let me do my class. Okay, because the day you go and sit behind my paper at the center day to either do your continuous assessment or your final exam. Nobody will be whispering nothing. My friend is saying, Not this communicative because they are the same. They are not the same. They have changed position. Yo. Yeah, they've changed the position, but it's communicative. <laughs> you are heard it. Okay. Okay. Who are you? Thank you. I just put that in name. Uh, Tracy, what can I put your hand down? Please let, let me call the few people left, okay? Jonas Akon. Gervais, please, you have spoken. Michael, you spoke to Michael Abel. Put your hand down now, okay? Uh -huh. oh, God. Isaac, please put your hand down. I want to call those who haven't spoken. Okay? So that Hello, is... madam. Yes. Let me hear Jonas now. Jonas, please do. Tell us what is happening to... Can you, Jonas? Hey, Ten, come here. I can't oh, what? What I <laughs> Madam, number eight. No, my head yeah. is done it or it's commutation. Okay. Look 10, I want to check it first. So I, I, I don't think it's, did I do it well? It's 10, uh, uh, transposition, check for me. Yeah. I don't think I did it. Yes, madam, it's a transposition. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So they change position and then they both become negative, negative. Okay, so I think I'm right. All right, it's transposition. Thank you very much. Let's do nine now. Nine is material equivalent, I think. Then 11. Yeah. yeah, 11 is what? I think it's quotation. The second part of 11 didn't show well. It's kill conditional R, I think. Kill so conditional R. Dog Bama is showing. Ah, okay. My distribution. Okay, so even with this small exercise we did, I'm sure you will be able to answer. Yes, we have five minutes or so to go, to round up. 10 to pay 26, unless there's any question that needs clarity, and I'll help you out. Go for tutorials, eh, please, my dear friends, and practice more. If there's no question, please 10 to pay 26. Look at some nice designs over there. 
Mm. Memorize these yeah, that's a few words. words to say to that one, and then we can end. Page 26. Okay. Oh, it's, I think it's the 9 and 11. Well, we've, we've done all. I, I just mentioned it. Nine, I said 9 is the material. If you look at it, you see it's material equivalent, isn't it? Yes, two together or four together. Either they can do together. I see that. It's material equivalent. Then 11, I said it looks like exportation, confirm. That's what I said. Then I turned over. And check. There are rules there that are it's exportation. Yeah. Yeah, Doc, it's yeah. true. It's exportation. Yes. Let's go now to 26, page 26. You see the rules for easy application. Rules of uh, decomposition. So when I say something, how you can decompose it. I'm not writing anything on the screen. So you can also look at your workbook and then we can have concentration. We have Vera, Emmanuel, Ngaya. I, I think I would know your name. Or you just want your hand to be up. Again. Okay, okay. Thank yeah, you. The but yeah, but if you if you have something to react to, why not? Mm. Let's finish. Look at that page very well. Hug it and 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 kiss it and keep it close to your chest. That page. It can be a decider in your grades for this course. So look at it very well. You see the logic tree decomposition rules. It is the same thing we have learned on table, but if you are for trees, tree decomposition, where you are decomposing on a tree, how you do it. Now look at conjunction, the first one to your left. That's yeah. conjunction, okay. P conjunction Q, if I gave you a compound that is a conjunction, how do you decompose it? It is a tree, so there is the stem of the tree, the middle part of the tree, and then there are the branches which hang out. You can either decompose on the stem, the straight line, some call it a trunk, or you can branch out depending on which connective you are dealing with. Either you branch or you decompose on the straight line. When do you do what? That's what has been stated in explicit terms for you here. Look at conjunction. If the compound you are dealing with is a conjunction, you decompose one on top of the other on a straight line under the connective. That's how you do it. So look at what I've done there and do the same if you were asked to decompose. You take the left one, put it down first. So here we, we, we take our P and put down, like you see done there. Then you take the Q and put it under it. Because conjunction is commutative, they can change position. You can bring the Q before the P, the meaning will change. You cannot do that, however, for a condition. has an antecedent, they can shift position. Okay. So if I gave you P conjunction Q, I said decompose. You take P first, put it under the connective. Then you take Q next, put it under P. It will be on the straight line. It means you are saying that when P is true and Q is also true, one on top of the other, you read it as end, then you are done. Case finished. Now go to disjunction, the right side. You have P disjunction Q. How do you decompose that? Disjunction is not conjunction. So how you decompose them can be the same. For disjunction, you decompose by branching out. So you branch, you don't go straight. As I have done there, let your eyes look at the workbook. So if I gave you P or Q, you branch out, you use the connective to be your point of contact. So where the connective sign is, you branch it out this way, branch it out that way. P on one, Q on the other, you have finished. That's how to decompose on the tree at this junction. When you are decomposing a conditional, you do it the same way as we did for this junction. The only difference is you will negate the antecedent. So conditional this decomposition looks like a disjunction, except that you negate the antecedent after you have plotted 
like you would have done for a Christian shape. Then when you look at the biconditional, which is there, is what you know on the trees that we are applying here. When I come to class, I'll show you better. I, want you to, and I just want you to see. A biconditional will only be true either when they are true together, B and Q are true together, that's one option, or when they are both false together, not P, not Q. See, so these are two possible ways of making the biconditional true. So P, biconditional Q, you branch out. Then you put P and Q on the left branch and put not P, not Q on the right branch. If you do that, you have decomposed by condition. Now try your hands on it. Just one, and then I think we, should, we have to end. If I gave you P, F, conjunction, not Q. How will you decompose it? P conjunction, not Q. Vera, the last woman standing. Straight or branch, Vera? P conjunction, not Q. Straight or branch? You should be looking at your book, Auntie. Sapo Ajin, um, uh, Madam Straight. Straight, very good. Then what do we put on the left? I said P conjunction, not Q. Um, Madam P. P first. P. Yes, negative Q. Very good. One on top of the other, all under the connective sign. You see that? Madam and Mark. Madam and Mark. Have yeah. written that name already? No, no, Madam. No, Madam. No, Madam. No, no today. It's no, it's no, madam. Hey, relax. Doc, doc, doc sorry, sorry. Oh, relax. Yeah, next it's one, listen, so listen, let's go. Next one. What about if I had said P conjunction, not Q. Hey, P disjunction, not Q, rather. Right? So it will be different. P disjunction, not Q. Will you branch or go straight? All of us. Very good. Very good. Now, this is the tricky one. You get it, and then I'll go home satisfied. I'll, I'll move out satisfied. Okay, I said, I'll answer for you. you Matia, when I say not P, listen attentively. When I say not P, conditional. Q, not P, conditional Q. How will you decompose it? P, straight. P, 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 branch, 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 branch. It's okay. Just one, let me ask someone to say it so that you can benefit, okay? So you branch out. What should we put at the first branch? The, the I don't know. Be patient, be patient. Not P, Conditional Q, that's what I said. So the original statement is not P. Now, what should we put on the left branch? Don't P. Priscilla, uh. Doma. Don't oh, P. Priscilla, Doma. Is, that, is it Priscilla, Doma? Yes, Doc. Very good. You will put P on the left branch, and then on the right branch, you put what? Q. Q. Tell me why you put P. When the rule says for conditional, branch out, blah, blah, blah. Explain. Because when you branch in the formula, it's already negating P. Ah, what being do? Meant to ask you. Meant to ask you. The thing is already negative. So if I apply a negation onto a negation, again, again becomes four. And that is how to assist the composition of that conditional became P on the left branch and then Q on the right. And with that one alone, I think that we are so good to go on. When I meet you in class, God willing, we'll complete our practicing of the two tables using okay. a set of formulas. We will practice a, a bit on what equivalences together in class using table. So you see how when you plot it, what we have done off, off, offline, we will do it together. And then we will now launch a bit more into 
Doc, please have a question. Fruit tree analysis. Okay. Who has a question Doc, now? Doc, please me. Friends. Friends, go ahead. Doc, please. Um, the letters, are they always letters or at times you be, will you make some written numbers or what? Do you attend the sessions, uh, friends? Yes, please. Yes, please. You don't. Oh, your question shows that you don't. Don't attend. Okay, please do, eh? Otherwise, you won't do well. It is not a, it is not a case. It's because of the nature of the content. It is not something you can play around. With. Otherwise, you write uh, people write five times. They are writing the same. You see. Okay. What are you for? What are you? The answer is this question is lecture one. The first contact yeah, time together. Uh, so you can have variables. You can have constants. Variables are the T Q R S. The constants are the, the operation signs, conditional, negation, what have you. And the variables for, for propositional logic are normally capital letters. When you do predicate logic or quantification in the others, then you may use small values to represent a predicate or a quantifier, and so on and so forth. No, but that's what I was trying to say. I said this already, so don't yeah. argue with me. I said, engage the context, my dear brother. Okay. All right, thank you all. Have a wonderful week. This is our talk. This evening, I'm not sure. Are we, should we meet this evening? We won't discuss. Yes, we will. We'll discuss what we want. Oh, we have a assignment. We like yeah, it. Listen, everybody. Listen, I'm going to, I, I'm going to open an ass assignment for you. That will be due Friday morning. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then I can come with you. All right, take care then. We meet okay. in, in person. The, whole, the, the two online sessions engage the content that we post and help your friends who may be. You need to see another day. To also do. You need to see another day. And all the best. Wasted. Au revoir.